But when you look at the recent people that have been controversial, the recent center of attention for left-leaning causes, you've got Dylan Mulvaney, you've got David Hogg, you've got Greta Thunberg, you've got the violent Tennessee Capitol protests where they, they overthrew the Capitol in protest for gun control and quote-unquote trans rights. Still, no one's told me what rights they don't have that I do. Uh, you've got the violent assault of Riley Gaines. You've got Antifa riots all over the country. What you saw in Chicago. Chicago was absolute chaos. This is the regime establishing a modernized version of Mao Zedong's Red Guard. This is not new. What you are seeing in America, violence by young people that is applauded by the folks in power, is not new. They are simply following a blueprint, a 75-year-old blueprint that the Biden administration is copying to a T. Now, you'll hit me back with, well, Caleb, young people have always been rebellious. You know, there's civil, civil rights, the anti-war movement, 1776. True. But all of those movements were anti-establishment. When young people are committing politically motivated acts of violence and the federal government, the mainstream media and big corporations are at best turning a blind eye and at worst outright celebrating it, something else is at play. And we're going to show you the parallels this week between Mao Zedong's red guard that helped him establish control over China, an authoritarian rule over China, and what you're seeing today. So for those of you that don't know, Mao Zedong, I got my dates here, so I'm, I'm going to be looking at my laptop referring to dates so I don't sound like an idiot here. Mao Zedong became the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party in 1943. In 1966, you had, or excuse me, between 1966 and 1976, you had what was called the Cultural Revolution, which really kicked off the communist takeover of China. The a major part of the Cultural Revolution is what was known as the Red Guard. The Red Guard was a radicalized group of college and high school-aged youths. So this is where it started. This goes back. This didn't just all happen overnight, just like this nonsense you're seeing in the United States didn't just happen overnight, you know, with trans kids, with, with violent takeovers of legislatures that are then applauded by local government, local and federal governments or government officials. This is not anything new that you're seeing right now. So in the 1950s, you had what the Chinese government referred to as sent down youth. Sent down youth were people that came, otherwise undereducated kids, which was a lot of China at the time, which was sent down to the reinvented school system by the communist government to, for, for lack of a better word, re-education or brainwashing, whatever you want to call it. The communists spent 15 years reinventing the school system, the public school system, almost the same time span that the left has had a foothold on the American public education system. This is where they re-educated Chinese youths in a campaign to destroy what they called the four olds. Now, the four olds were customs, cultures, habits, and ideas. Anything that they deemed to be outdated, customs, cultures, habits, or ideas, had to be destroyed. And anyone... Anybody who felt that those things should be retained or protected to any degree was ostracized, persecuted, tortured, and in many cases killed by the Red Guard. What they did in these school systems is very similar to what you're seeing happen in the American school system, at least the public school system. They turned kids against their parents. Their parents represented the four olds. They replaced the parents with the state. The state came in. The kids hated the parents. They had to have someone to look up to. So the state came in, took the place of the parents, and they answered to them now. They respected them now. They told the kids, if your parents have a problem with what your what what we're teaching you at school, they're part of the problem. They're outdated and ignorant. They're bigoted. Does that sound familiar? Like a teacher telling an eight-year-old that she's trans and hiding it from her parents, and if her parents have a problem with it, well, now in the state of Washington, CPS gets called and they lose their kid. That's a law now, and it's been a law in Canada for a long time. They gaslight them into doubting basic truths and thinking that their parents were lying their entire lives. You know, basic truths like men can't get pregnant. Basic truths like two plus two equals four, which is now white supremacy. You know, like, one of the other things they did? 
One of the other things they went heavily after, Mao's Red Guard, heavily targeted religion. They hated religion. Religion was seen as standing... In, there is a reason that every government throughout history has, every tyrannical government throughout history has tried to squash religious upright or religious groups. There's a reason they've done it. Hitler with the Jews, Mao Zedong um, with the, the major religions in China. There were several of them. I'm, the current Chinese government with Uyghur Muslims, with Christians. I mean, you name it. It's gone on throughout history. There's a reason that governments like to, squ to squash religious movements. And it's because they know at the end of the day, you cannot truly control someone who knows that you don't have the final say on something. At the end of the day, yeah, you may be the one that pulls the trigger and kills them, but they get to answer to their God, and so do you. And that's why they know that it's important to smash religion when, when you're bringing up a communist dictatorship. If you demonstrated... Any respect, any respect for the four categories, the four olds, you were deemed a bigot and public harassment and acts of violence committed against you were not only acceptable, they were expected. Targeting religion, right? Like when a transgender shoots up a Christian school and the regime comes out and fawns over transgenders and doesn't say a lick about Christians. That, that, that's what I mean by targeting religion. It's very clear what the message was there. The Red Guard would break into homes. They would destroy buildings. They'd loot. They'd vandalize anything they deemed to be resembling of the four olds. Sound familiar? Artists who spoke out against the new cultural revolution were persecuted, harassed, and assaulted. Like when people rushed the stage on Dave Chappelle, with an, or a guy rushed the stage on Dave Chappelle with a knife and said it was about his transgender jokes. And people came out and said that was an act of self-defense. They persecuted, tortured, and killed members of what they called the nine black categories. The nine black categories were the enemies of the state. They were landlords, rich farmers. I don't know who decided who was rich, but it, it doesn't matter. Counter-revolutionaries, bad influencers. So anyone they, they determined to be bad influencers, you know, like comedians that tell non-corporate approved jokes. Right-wingers, traitors, spies, capitalists, and intellectuals who didn't follow suit with the CCP's agenda. They were persecuted first, then they were arrested, then they were tortured, then they were killed. It didn't happen all overnight. They didn't just start killing people for speaking out. First it started with, yeah, it, we're going to make it societally acceptable for these people to be harassed because they're guilty of wrong think. It didn't just start off as legalizing murder. It eventually turned into legalizing murder. Anyone who thought out, who spoke out of line, anyone who thought the wrong thing, anyone who dared to question the regime was killed. Didn't happen all overnight. They didn't just start popping them, but they worked their way up. They slowly dehumanized the people that thought differently than them, which is exactly what you're seeing toward conservatives. Government officials lifted restrictions on violent behavior and rioting by young people. Sound familiar? Like you're seeing right now in Chicago? Where you, where I saw a video of a horde of 25 kids clobbering on a middle-aged woman in the middle of the street. I have no idea the context of the video. I can tell you right now, they were in the wrong. I can, right, they were in the wrong. And the mayor came out and called the mob the victims said that they're the ones who are oppressed. The new mayor, Baltimore, during the George Floyd riots, rest in peace, by the way, love his opinions on trans people. Baltimore, during the, the, the George Floyd riots, they declared certain parts of the city to be riot safe zones. You could go there, loot, destroy, vandalize, and assault without any legal consequences. It was the freaking purge. The national police chief in China even said, while they lifted these restrictions, that it was no big deal what was happening because the only people the Red Guard were assaulting, robbing, raping, and killing were quote-unquote bad people. And bad people translates directly to people who don't think like them. You know the best part about this, though? You want to know what happened to the Red Guard? Once Mao attained a comfortable amount of power, in the late 60s, he declared the group that he helped establish 
to be a threat to national security, and the People's Liberation Army violently put them down like the stray dogs they were. They massacred them. The violence and lawlessness that was carried out in Mao's name that he incur he trained, he, he educated them on, he trained them to commit, and then he legalized them to commit. That violence was turned around and used as an excuse by Mao to grab more power for the CCP and the Chinese government as a whole. He said, look at this. Crime is out of control. We need more security in here. We need the military on the streets. And his own creation, his Frankenstein's monster of a group, is what he is the excuse that he used to swoop the military in and take power. Again, this didn't happen overnight. This was a gradual process that was kicked off by the infiltration of the education system by a group of radical Marxists, just like what has happened in the United States. You're not safe anywhere. Even in red America, you've got this nonsense going on. The school system in Nebraska, it's been hijacked. We showed a video months ago from the Iowa public, or one of the Iowa public, or not Iowa, Idaho public school districts talking about safe porn consumption for 12-year-olds. The youth were slowly turned against the old ways until they had burned and desecrated everything their culture once stood for and held sacred. They were turned against their parents, their grandparents, their religious leaders, and other authority figures they once respected because those people held on to the old ways. They were hindering progress. They were standing in the way of the cultural revolution. Sound familiar? We can take your kids if you don't let them transition. They took inch after inch after inch until there was nowhere left to go for anybody who wasn't 100% on board with the CCP and the Red Guards communist agenda. And if we've learned one thing from communists throughout history, it's that their bloodthirst is never quenched. Once they had gotten rid of anyone who thought out of line, the monster started eating itself. Mao started killing members of the Red Guard. Once those useful idiots lost their value, once they weren't so useful anymore, they were tossed to the side and used as an excuse to give more power to the government. The government that went on to massacre 80 million of their own citizens. These are the parallels of what's going on right now. The complete destruction of the entire cultural foundation of the United States, turning children against their parents, grandparents, the mocking of religion, the legalization of lawlessness in certain areas when it's convenient, when it's used against the right people, the exact same thing is happening here, and it started the same way that communist China started, the infiltration of the education system by communist Marxist radicals. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it, and we are way too deep into repeating it right now. I'm going to tell you guys right now, anyone that, that, that's out there rioting and protesting and, 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 and that wants to be part of this Gen Z social media revolution, you are not special. You are a useful idiot. You will lose your value to the regime someday the same way that the Red Guard lost its value to Mao Zedong. And just like the Red Guard, you will find yourselves either incarcerated or dead in a ditch. But unlike the Red Guard, I don't know who's going to do it to you. Because the difference between the Chinese people in the 60s and 70s and the American people today is 400 million firearms and a whole lot less tolerance for your bullshit. I don't know who's going to do it to you. It's a warning. Stop now because both paths lead to destruction. Whether it be from the people who claim to be your friend or the people that want absolutely nothing to do with you. Good luck. I would quit if I were you. Just, just let it go. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. We are in trouble as a society. This is a blue... The, the parallels between Mao's cultural revolution, specifically the Red Guard, and what you're seeing with culture and media and education and how they treat the youth today are too similar to be a coincidence. This is not a coincidence. There are bad, nasty people who pull the strings specifically in this country, but around the rest of the world too. There are bad, nasty people who studied history 
and have the absolute worst intentions for you and your family, and they're copying Mao's blueprint to a T, except they learn from history too, and they'll learn where Mao went wrong. They'll learn where Mao went wrong, and they won't get it wrong. So we have to stop this before it starts. We have to stop this before it gets violent. Get your kid. I don't care if you got to take out loans. I don't care what you do. Get your kids out of this godforsaken public school system. I understand not all teachers are bad. I understand most teachers aren't bad. I get that. But the system itself is inherently corrupt. It cannot be fixed by a few good eggs. It just can't. Get them out of it. Get them off of TikTok. Also, <laughs> controlled by the Chinese. Crazy how that works. Crazy how Chinese TikTok, before they banned it, pushed you know math, science, and history and arts up to the Chinese kids up the algorithm and gender nonsense and stupid challenges up to the American kids. It's almost like they're trying to dumb down a population and divide it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to click the link in the description to get the full episode on Rumble. If you prefer to listen along, you can actually get us on Spotify, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. You can also go to www.outlawstreamers.com to learn more about not just my show, but tons of other great shows and all the exciting projects they have coming up. Follow my socials at Caleb Isn't Funny on Twitter and Instagram, at Caleb Salvatore Comedy on the Chinese spy app that is TikTok, and be sure to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks, and we'll see you every Saturday for Brand new episodes of That's Based. Peace.